This is a seven month old neutered Tamascan. At the very end of this video, we're gonna answer the real question, which is, is this the breed used in the Game of Thrones? In the meantime, this is a fearful dog. The question that I'm gonna help you with is when to use the pull-in method to deal with fear. You're gonna see him freak out right here. Barks at me. Why is he barking at me? Because I'm shaking their hands. Could be a number of reasons. This is five minutes into the session, so I'm trying to figure things out at this point. Is it for protection? Is it because he just doesn't want me to touch his family? It's hard to say. I would say it's not protection based on we are at my house. These people obviously have accepted me into their life. If it is protection, it's a perverted sense of protection, and he is wrong to do it. So we're going to let him know that he's wrong to do it. The main question, though, is if a dog cannot be get close to a stimulus that it's scared of like a person like a dog like a vacuum cleaner when is it appropriate to make them face their fears so i told her to use the displacement the out of the circle of trust method she basically said no she got him out of the mix she comes back he barked again and she displaced him again he's out of the circle of trust she kind of grabbed him Little bit of a consequence, little bit of a punishment. Not much, obviously, he doesn't need much. He's scared, maybe it's protection. And so just a little bit of a consequence for that behavior, because most people, there's no consequence. The dog freaks out at someone on leash, they just pull the dog away and they go, oh my gosh. And then the person leaves and the dog gets what it wants. So right there, the consequence was out of the circle of trust, which you've heard, and one little bark and then there's less of a bark. Now more handshaking because of those two out of the circle of trust consequences. Now he's 10 times better with me. Great, check it off the list. A dog should be forced to face his fears when two things are true and only when two things are true. One, when given enough time and given enough distance, he will still not approach the stimulus on his own or it's going glacially slow for you and you're having to spend eight hours a day training, that is too slow. And you're gonna hear her talk about that method in just a minute. So if the dog will never face his fears, which you're gonna see in about five minutes in this video, this dog have the inability to face his fears, we need to do the pull-in method. The other is if the fear is sort of, is, is, doesn't make any sense. So no men have been, have been mean to you, yet you're jumping around barking at men. And you might say, well, it's legitimate because the dog's acting scared. No, that doesn't mean that it's legitimate just because the dog's acting that way. The dog could just go, I don't really want to be by this guy. All right, now to original audio. What did the positive reinforcement trainer say? So she said, start at the distance that he's the most comfortable, that he's not growling, he's not reacting at all. Yep. And then you um, get, you start to um, decrease and, that distance. And you reinforce him. And you reinforce him. Whatever he's good, you take him away right. back to his comfort zone, basically. As far as distance, my dad could be down at the gate or even further and he'd be growling. Finding the distance at which the dog wouldn't react, then slowly going towards the stimulus. In this case, the dog growls at their parent, their dad, and reinforcing the dog along the way and then when the dog is a little uncomfortable bringing the dog away from the stimulus, in this case, the dad did not work. They drove three hours to get to me because it did not work. That That is the positive reinforcement playbook. Book. I am fine with that method, except it's super duper slow. And sometimes you just need to take the bull by the horns a little bit, put on your big boy pants, and try to actually make a change in your dog without being scared and acting like the dog is a poor little baby and it can't handle any adversity in your life. And I'm not talking about these people. I'm talking about the method that they were told to do is a weak, we, sh we can never have a dog feel any stress in, in its life method. And that's why I am busy and they are not. I am not bragging. I don't, I'm over people spending time and money on methods that don't work because the positive reinforcement folks are scared human beings and I, I'm over it, okay? We're off in the coaching program so that we are building not scared trainers who actually wanna help dogs and help people and learn how to have a helper dog, learn how to use a facility. I'm gonna show them everything they need to know. They need to know. So now we're in the pasture. Email beckmanventures at gmail.com if you're interested in being part, part of the coaching program. So he is not a happy boy. Um, he is, you saw him with that freeze frame meeting Prince. He's not terribly scared of Prince. We went right up to Prince's nose. 
Now he's just a little more freaked out of either me or Prince. I don't know which one. We're going to try to be cool and chill and hang out and let him run around and let him be scared and just get used to things, right? I'm super into the desensitization method. And we're saying, okay, mommy likes Prince. Let's see if he warms up. Sometimes the dogs will come over. You've seen it in my videos. And he's just like running around the back. He's got all the world, all the freedom in the world to avoid the stimulus, which is mainly me, but to a degree Prince. So I'm over it at this point and we need to force the issue because we know that this is going to go glacially slow and these people are going to have no answers without training 10 hours a day. So here's what I'm going to do. All the other three quote unquote owners are up there. Okay. We're going to send her up there as well. I'm doing the behind the face method, right? The behind of the dog is the least scary part of the dog. He still doesn't want anything to do that. So I, I use something called placement or reinforcement. In this case, the reinforcement is the humans. So if he wants to get to the humans, he has to face his fears. Okay. I told her stay right there, but then I'm going to actually send her up. Okay. So he's got to face his fears to get to the reinforcement, which is them. And he's, he's unable to do it. This is the point at which I said, okay, he's got to, he's got to be forced to. He's never going to choose to be near me or to be near Prince, no matter even if all the people he wants to be near are up there. He's just not going to choose to do it. Look at him. He, he'd rather be in a pasture while it's raining by himself than go three feet from me or Prince. He's, he's, he, he, he needs to be forced to face his fears. Your dogs, my, I made a mistake right here. I put Prince in a sit stay and then I said, let's go to the human and totally release Prince. So, and then he's like, oh, everyone's out of the way. I'm just going to run by them. So now I know he needs to be forced to face his fears. And that's the method that we're going to talk about. And it's going to start right now. This is something you guys can do. All right. We're going to get them out of the way. And he's going to say, well, I want to go to my mommy's and my daddy. And I go, and this is very methodical. Okay, so watch me. I'm going to slowly reel him in. And then each time he fights me, he is never going to get an inch farther. Okay? Now, I'm not going to just reel him in all at once. It's too much. What is it at? Let's say that leash is six feet right now. Okay? And he's going, yeah, but I want to be by them. And maybe he's thinking, oh my God, this guy's going to kill me if I get close to him. I doubt it. But let's say he thinks, oh, I'm just scared of this guy. That's probably more the case. He needs to learn that I'm not going to do anything to him and he has nothing to be scared of. But why would he learn that when he never is forced to be near a person? Why would he know that? So you see me move my foot. So I moved in three inches. So now we're at five and a half feet. So they... By the time he's next to me, right, six inches from me in like two minutes, he's going to go, oh, I didn't die. I was near that guy and nothing happened. I had no idea. How is he going to ever be near me if he's never forced to be near me? And if he's never near me, how is he going to learn I'm not going to kill him? Right? It's a, it's a cycle. It's a circle. So now I'm what, three feet? I don't know how I did that guess I was talking and I didn't even notice that I reeled him in or I went closer. I can go closer. Or I can reel him in either way. He's going to try to get away. And I'm not going to give. I'm still at three feet leash, maybe even less. And he's going, oh, this isn't so bad. My head's down. I look like I'm asleep. I don't think my eyes are closed, but they do look closed, which would be weird for them to actually be closed. I think I'm just looking down, but I'm not looking at him. Okay. I'm not trying to reach for him. People are always like, oh, they try to pet the dog and then the dog backs up. No petting. I don't think I pet this dog once. I could have probably towards the end. Oh, little fight. Nope, it's not going to work. Oh, I just lean my body a little bit. Then I'm going to just slowly reel him in or slowly get close to him. But escape is not an option. Remember him in the pasture? Escape was always an option. It's not an option anymore. He's got to face, face his fears. You can see people doing this. This is, a, this is a method. I didn't come up with this method. This is a thing. It's just, is there risk to it? I mean, if it doesn't have a muzzle on, there's a tiny bit of risk, but not really. There's not a lot of risk to it, especially the muzzle on. 
and there's not a lot of risk of damaging the dog. Really, if you do it slowly, if you do it right, if you do have the right reasons for doing it. Now, if a dog's like scared of a train, are you going to go be near a train? No, a train is terrifying. It's loud. It moves quick. It, you're going to overstimulate their brain. If a dog's scared of men, are you going to have men pull them on their lap and then stroke them and constantly just touch them? No, their brain gets all wigged out. This is not that. This is a middle of the road between sort of that that force-free method of slow and methodical, but yet not not as not as slow with some forced aspects to it. And here we are. And the dog goes, "Hey, this dude's six inches away from me, and I'm fine. And he hasn't tried to reach for me. And oh, I kind of like guys." or people near me is not the biggest deal. Now, when he meets the next guy tomorrow or the next day, look at that. Oh, check me out. First time he smelled a man, a human, let's say. Forget men. That was a big deal right there. Then I'm going to start walking with him. Now, what I'm going to do in a minute is I'm going to actually place the three owners at different parts of the property. You're going to see me start to point. Why do I do that? Okay, because... If I leave them up by the office area up there and then I walk down towards the pasture, he's going to, let's say he stops and fights to get away from me. I'm not going to know if he is fighting because he simply wants to be near them or if he's terrified of me. So if I place them at three different points, I will always be walking towards one of them. Hence, if he fights to get away from me, I know he's fighting to get away from me, not fighting to get to them, which is different things. So I start to move with him he kind of goes well i'm not gonna be able to get away from this guy i might as well just cru cruise with this guy so it's at this point that i'm going to start to point and direct them because i realize i start to go down there and i realize you know this might th he may be fighting to get away from me so start to point get him moving all over the place and then you have to t dog training you have to take out variables so you cannot know what's going through their head if there's multiple variables of why they could be reacting a certain way you need to know why so she goes down there a little freak out doesn't matter not gonna give by the way throughout this I'm talking to him okay I'm like you're a good boy everything's fine not not incessantly but in a in a tone like everything's fine don't worry about it good boy you're being a good boy you're being a good boy even though he's not being the greatest boy in the world it's fine to talk to him so she's down there someone's over by the deck and someone's over by the bushes so anyway he walks He's walking towards something that he likes. That's, in a nutshell, the forced friendship, get over your fears method. It can only be done if they're never going to face their fears. It can only be done if, they, uh, if the fear is somewhat, um, doesn't make sense for lack of a better word. If you're like, listen, you were fine. I raised you from eight weeks old. It's silly that you're nervous of that. Then it probably actually is silly that they're nervous of that. They're abused by a man who would seriously abuse them. I probably wouldn't do this method. Okay, I would wait till the second session to do this method. I'd use more treats and then do this method. I don't know. Everything's different. That's why people like my videos. Is all the dogs are different. You've probably never seen me scatter the people all over the property like this in different ways for this reason. Now, he's not saying hi to her. He might not be saying hi to her because Prince is right there. I really don't know. I think, I, I don't want to say anybody's his favorite. He likes them all about the same. Then we're going to go to the next guy. Then we're going to go to the girl. Hopefully that me that makes sense. The forced method. We're going to now go to original audio. So you could do this with your dad. Um, your dad could use treats, although I think treats are going to only go so far. It's, I think you should do the one train. But if you don't, then you got to do some version of this. He'll never face his fears on his own. He'll, he'll avoid till he dies, I think, from what I've seen. That's the best boy in the world. You're the best boy. You're the best boy, I know. I know you're a good boy. I know you're a good boy. Are these the dogs in Game of Thrones? These aren't. They're uh, basically their cousin, the older breed, Northern Inuit dog. That's the, the Game of Thrones dog. Yeah.